Alright, welcome to my video tutorial series on learning to program using Bolt. Now you probably haven't set Bolt up already so this video is going to be all about setting up Bolt so that you can use it in your projects and in the next video, on the next videos uh, series we're going to go through quite a few little recipes where we use Bolt to do some of the simple things that we might need to do in programming. So if you haven't seen Bolt already, Bolt is uh, visual scripting for Unity 3D. If you're learning to program, one of the big problems is uh, actually programming in C Sharp. It's fairly complicated and you don't have a lot of stuff in front of you to get you started and uh, you have to watch a lot of tutorials before you can understand. But with Bolt, I'm going to show you just how to how you can work things out and get things working without necessarily understanding exactly how to do something before you go into it. So let's get started with it. Um, I've got an empty project right now. I'm using Unity 2019.4.13 uh, right now, but you can it'll work on almost anything after 2018. So as long as you've got a more recent version of Unity, you should be fine. The way you install Bolt is fairly complicated, so we'll run straight through it. What it, what you want to do is go to the um, the asset store right now, and as long as you're signed into Unity, once you've got the asset store up and running, you should be able to import it straight into your project. Um, so once the asset store comes up, uh, do a really simple uh, search just for um, Bolt. Um, I'm going to type in Volt Visual just because I know that one of the first things that comes up is uh, not necessarily Bolt Visual Scripting. So this is what you're looking for, this Bolt Visual Scripting. Um, if you click on Bolt Visual Scripting, you should be able to import this into your assets if you haven't already set this up. So um, there's obviously a new version for me, so I'm just going to quickly update this and download it so that you'll be going through the same process as I'm going through right now. When you click import, you get a tiny uh, a, a tiny package into your project. So you import that, and you. Um, but unfortunately, at this point, people think they're done, and they should be able to get scripting with Bolt. Um, but there's a couple more steps to go. So when you've when you've managed to do this, uh, you'll see that there's a new tools menu on the top of your. Um, on top of your window that says install Bolt. So you do need to do this and it will install a, a whole bunch more that it will also need to download. So I just clicked import on that and the whole thing should come in. So you can see when this is all done you'll have this uh, window comes up, the Bolt Setup Wizard and I'm just going to click next and run through the whole process. I'm going to choose human naming because I'm assuming if you're a beginner uh, you're uh, not necessarily going to want the other naming but one of the great things about Bolt is that you can go straight from this to C-sharp programming when you've done a lot of Bolt the C-sharp programming makes a lot more sense so this is the assemblies that are included by default I'm just going to choose the defaults the, that it comes up with and click next and again I'm not going to change anything here there's a bunch of types that it's going to import I'm just going to say yeah sure why not and click generate um, and again this will run through the whole process the, uh, as I mentioned before, Bolt's an awesome way to get started with programming and be able to work things out because uh, what it does is it builds the documentation into the actual uh, programming. We're going to go through that once this is, uh, this is installed. I'm just going to pause the recording and we'll get back to it when it's done. So this took me uh, maybe, I don't know, a minute or two. Um, we can go from this to, the, uh, to look at the manual. Um, and I highly recommend if you haven't done this that you could you could do that as well. But um, I'm going to show you just a just going to test by making a simple script, uh, just to spin something around, and uh, then we'll get started and show you how to use it, and make sure that it's installed properly. So I'm going to close this right now. So we're gonna we've got the default scene in here, and we're just going to do a really simple scene to make sure that Bolt is installed correctly and that it works okay. So um, I'm going to create a 3D object on the scene, so I'm just going to create a cube in the middle of the scene and I'm just going to reset its position so that it's right in the middle and we're going to make a simple script for this. So if I play the game right now, nothing happens. Um, I'll hit play. The scene will be seen through the view of the camera and the cube is sitting in front of it. Um, make sure that that's the same for you because um, obviously we're going to do something to this cube uh, in script so we can see that Bolt is set up properly. I'm going to make this window just a touch bigger and we're going to make a really simple um, simple script to make this turn around. So why Bolt is amazing and I'm going to show you in a second that anything that you can do inside of the editor 
you can do with Bolt and you can do with C Sharp. Um, but you have to be able to work out a process to know exactly what it is you're trying to do. So often one of the ways you can work out is you can work out from what component it is that you'd like to work on and then what you'd like to change in that component and then work from that into what, how it, yeah, it would affect um, a script. So I'm going to use the transform component and if I look at the the rotation values and if I say rotate around the Y and I actually just drag on that X you can see that I'm spinning this around so effectively to get Bolt working I'm just going to effectively try and do this. I'm going to try and affect the transform component in a script and do something with the rotation. So I'll click on add component you'll see that um, there is a new bolt section that's included in the component so I'm going to click on bolt and I'm going to create the flow machine that's the the, the basic uh, script for a particular object and I'm going to click on that flow machine one and it will create a few things for me so first up um, you'll see that the flow machine appears um, and it says that there isn't a flow graph right now so it also creates a variable section so uh, if I'm able, if I want to store a variable for this particular object that affects, say the the speed of the rotation, for example, could be stored in here. And I'll show you that a little bit later in one of the other ones. But let's just get this working. So we're going to um, create this flow graph. So I'm just going to click new, and it's going to ask for a flow graph. It's automatically put that in the assets folder of my project. I may um, be sensible enough to create a new folder for my scripts. I could call that scripts and um, inside that folder I'm going to create a new one and it's always good to name things correctly so or name things usefully so I'm going to make a, a spin flow graph that is going to weirdly enough spin the cube so if I click um, enter for that that should be created so I'll see inside the scripts folder now there is the flow graph the spin flow graph so we're going to go down and have a little look at this we're going to edit this graph and this is why Bolt is pretty awesome. So, um, weirdly enough, mine's appeared on the wrong window, so I'm going to just dock it over here. Um, one little tip for using Bolt is sometimes this window is a bit small, um, so you can zoom in and zoom out with the scroll wheel, and you can use the middle mouse wheel, uh, press the middle mouse down, and you can move around you can pan around the view. But if you're working solely on this, you can click this full screen in the top. Uh, top right, the full screen gives you takes up the full editor window, um, and takes over all the other ones until you click full screen again, and it goes back. What it does by default is it also includes a few more pieces like um, the variable list, so you can create the variables here and drag them from here. And when you're finished, you can go back to the the small window again. So you can see from here we have the start and the update event for Bolt. Um, this is uh, effectively, uh, this will get done at the start. Um, why Bolt is amazing is, as I mentioned before, all the help is built in. So you hover over anything and you'll see information about it. So this is called every frame. And this one is called the first time the machine is enabled before any update. So this is uh, when this, the game starts. And then this is during every frame. So I want it to rotate during every frame. So I'm probably going to go in here. So what I'm going to do is I'll just drag a line out and then I can go from there. So it gives me intelligent um, guesses on what is gonna, what I'm going to need. Um, so there's a bunch of things that you can find, but I, I, I know I wanted to work on the cube and I wanted to work on the transform component of the cube. So if I click on the cube, um, you'll see that it creates a few more um, bits and pieces for me. So um, do I want to work on the game object? Well, actually, no, I want to work on this transform component and any other component that would be part of your game objects like rigid bodies or whatever they'd also appear here if they were part of it so um, I'm going to use the transform one and then there's a bunch more so it doesn't really it's not guessed what I want to do right now but if I roll down or scroll down a few of the top options here are things like rotating so it's it shows you the different versions as well so you can read down the bottom over here, when you select one, you'll be able to read what it does. And uh, as I said, built-in documentation, so it makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to use this one because I know it's three vectors of input, an X, a Y, and a Z. So um, I can I can use this one right here, which is the three separated by commas. If I click on it right now to choose that one, you'll see that there's the three values come in here. 
So um, an X, a Y, and a Z. So that just matches up to the transforms that we had inside of the, the um, inside of the inspector. So I'm just going to type a value in here. So I'm just going to randomly choose 10 for the Y angle, um, and then I'm going to click back to the full screen, and then I'm going to hit play to play it. So in theory, if everything worked, this should rotate around every frame 10 degrees around the Y axis. And as you can see from the uh, setup that you see in front of you, this is spinning really, really fast around that y-axis. So I know it works. The last little thing before we end this video is I'm just going to show you that the flow graph, um, to debug the flow graph, um, when it's in play, I'm still in play mode right here, you can see that there's things happening. You can see what events are being triggered and... Um, this is a, a really awesome way. If there was values that were getting set by things, you'd also be able to see those on the arrows. So, uh, as you can see, Bolt's pretty amazing. Um, we uh, managed to successfully set up Bolt, install it correctly, and we've managed to create a very simple script to ensure that it works. So this is the first of the series, as I said. There will be more videos to come, and we're going to work on some of the the more common things that are required in making video games um, or simple video games for beginners and we're going to do them all with Bolt. I hope you're looking forward to it. I certainly am and uh, I'll see you in the next video.